أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين صدق الله العظيم Here we have our dear children ready to give out the feeling of joy and pride in being home far away from homeland with the Qatar national anthem followed by the Indian national anthem. Mr. K.C. Abdul Latif, Principal Dr. Subhash B. Nair, Shantanikedan Indian School Management Committee members, Administrator, Vice Principals, Head Teachers, Teachers, Educators, Academicians, and my dear fellow parents. As vision provides the direction for the entire organization and it also motivates, inspires, and empower the employees in our organization. It's very important to have a strong vision. Shantaniketan Indian School has redefined their vision 
mission and core values pertaining to the need to create the energy and will to make change happen. It inspires all the stakeholders to commit, to persist and to give their best. The new vision of the SIAS is distinctively excellent education. The reformed mission of SIS is value-based, affordable and sustainable quality education, fostering active learning and meaningful participation of parents and community to ensure holistic development of children. The redesigned core values of SIS are righteousness, justice, equality, integrity, empathy, respect and accountability. At this outset, I would like to convey the greatest joy in welcoming a panel of five members and a moderator to instill the role of parents in achieving the school objectives. First up, we have Mrs. Antoinette Ross, who is working in Sidra Medicine. She's interested in teaching, listening to music and exploring new destinations. Next, we have Mrs. Nadia Nurdi, who is working in Hamad Medical Corporation and also interested in reading, writing poetry and baking. Next panelist is Mrs. Lina Olasheri, who is working as an accountant and interested in reading, drawing and gardening. Our third panelist, I'm sorry, I'm fourth panelist is Mrs. Sarada Bandari, who is working as a nurse in Qatar Petroleum and interested in doing social welfare work, listening to music, traveling and swimming. Our final panelist is Mrs. Shini Mohandas, who is an electric and electronic engineer and interested in content writing, reading, gardening, traveling and exploring places. To moderate today's session, we have Mr. Anis Karim, who is working in Doha, Doha Bank as an insurance specialist. He's also founder secretary of Compassionate Alliance, an organization set up for the creation of awareness of learning disability among children. It's quite interesting that we have united here to discuss something beyond our expectations, something beyond our current process, something beyond the set serious types. So before I could proceed further, here is an important rule to be maintained whilst the discussion is in process. Audience, you're free to post questions and clarifications in the chat box. Thank you and over to the moderator. Uh, thank you, Jumana. Welcome once again to yet another edition of the Parent Discussion Forum. In this edition, we are focusing on the various aspects of parenting, like how to bring up your child as a mentally, physically, and spiritually healthy individual with a positive attitude and being socially responsible. Last but not least, yeah, I can do. We, I also, can. we also have to focus on the achievement of our children's academic excellence and their overall wellness and happiness. We have five panelists, as Jumana mentioned, leading the discussion. We have with us Antoinette Rose, Nadia Nuruddin, Lina Olacheri, Shini Mohandas, and Sarada Pandari. We always speak about being positive. It is easier said than done. Keeping the children positive in today's world with the heavy academic load and the extreme pressure on them to perform is a tough task. I request Antoinette Rose to enlighten us on how to keep the children positive in today's tough world. Antoinette, my worry is that children today are easily getting a rut due to the current changes in the education system and they are developing negativity towards the educational system. What solution do you envisage? Thank you, Mr. Anis, and good evening to everybody. Before I start into my discussion, I would like to ask all the panelists and our parents here present in the forum. How many of you do actually agree to this point, what Mr. Anis said? Maybe you can just put it in a chat box, yes or no. Come on, you can share your opinion. You can put in the chat box, yes or no. There, I can see answers coming in. 
uh, yes. So I can see that most of you agree to what, oh yes, there's a lot of yes coming in. Okay, so that's what every, but most of us agreed to it. School is definitely a very fun place to be in for the children. But with the current academic system, homework, activities, curriculum, people, students are getting stuck in that. And most of our children are part of it. But have you ever thought, why is it so? What is it that brings in negativity in the children? There could be a lot of aspects starting. It could be from the home, from the school, the atmosphere, the situation being ignored, fear of failure, fear of a uh, lot of other things that children can face, which we really don't get the point when they have that feelings. And the kids, they start thinking, I'm not going to get it. Nobody likes me. I can't do it. I'm going to mess it up. He or she is better than me. These are simple negative thoughts that come into our children's mind. Because for them, the world just revolves around it. There's a simple activity or a game that actually you can play with your children. Just give them a small sheet of paper and tell them on a daily basis, just put down a word or a phrase that they feel or think about when they are a bit sad during the day. Continue this for another two to three weeks and then just go back and look into those shits. You'll be surprised seeing the words they have mentioned. That's their negative thoughts. That's what they feel when they are upset or when they are fear, or they have any kind of uh, depression due to any kind of things that's happened throughout the day. Now to change this, there is no, there's nothing much huge that you need to do. It's just simple reflection to yourself and your activities on your day-to-day -day life. Being a role model. Now, when I talk about role model, you don't have to be a superhero for your child. Just your daily activities, that's all that you need to monitor. You had a bad day at office, you come back home. How do you express that with your partner? What are the words that you use? You had a hard time with your neighbor. How do you express that at home? So these, see, basically our kids, they look upon us. They reflect what we say, we do, our body language. That's what they try to imitate. So does when they have go to school also. They imitate their teachers. Back home, they imitate us. So it's just about changing our way of dealing with situation. At least not in front of children. Don't try to put uh, criticisms on, in front of children. That itself makes a big impact on them. Try to bring in positive thoughts about the school, about the things that's happening around them. Those can all change their negative attitude. Another important point is instill responsibility. Now, this is something very close to me, especially during this pandemic situation when our kids are mostly at home. This is something that you can actually inculcate in them. Simple, just ask them to prepare a timetable for themselves starting from the morning till the night. Set their timings for like the dinner, the lunch, the breakfast, online classes, assignments. Let them follow it by themselves. That brings in responsibility. At the same time, discipline. These responsibility and discipline goes parallel together. And that instead actually bringing in all the negative thoughts, they actually start developing positive thoughts. And this not only continues, just not about this point of time, it actually continues as and when they grow. What do you think about it, Mr. Anis? Wow, I'm sure that you have really enlightened the parents on how to keep the children positive in today's tough academic environment. Thank you so much, uh, Antoinette. Now that we have got a few tips on how to keep the children positive, it's time to move on to yet another important aspect of parenting. To remain positive, we need to keep the morale of our children high. But how? Mrs. Nadia Nuruddin is here to share her experiences and views on what we as parents should do to raise the morale of our children. So, um... Is the question Nadia, that's posed to me? Why is it? Oh, continue, sir. Nadia. Why is it important? To, why is it important to raise the morale of the children? Thank you for that question. Uh, I have a question to ask the parents and uh, answer it in the chat box. Uh, I'd like to know your perspective. There are two children. Child one, very talented but quite shy, afraid to take new challenges. And because of that, you know, she has fear of failure, doesn't take new challenges. And there's child two, also very talented, but uh, very confident, uh, takes up new challenges. The little ups and downs in life doesn't really matter. Uh, they can, you know, overcome it. What kind of child would you want, child one or child two? So I want to see your answers in the chat box. Would you want your child to be more like child one or child two? No answers in yet. Child two, 
yeah, child two. All of us would want our child to be like child two, right? But uh, let me tell you, we've got child one and child two in all of our children. And it's our job as parents to ensure that whenever uh, obstacles and uh, challenges uh, come in front of our children and child one, the fearful child, rears its head, we uh, help our children's child two, the brave child, to come out. And in order to do that, we, uh, we should encourage a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset. In a fixed mindset, we focus on a child's ability that you're good at math, you're good at sport, but in a growth mindset, you focus on a child's uh, effort that with enough practice, you can be good at math, with enough practice, you can be good at uh, sport. And as parents, we usually, you know, we focus uh, on making our child be the best. And we tell them, you know, you can be the best, you know, you should be the first in class and stuff like that. And, you know, every child is different but no child is perfect. And every child will have to, uh, you know, will fail and will have challenges that they can't overcome at least for a short period of time. And, you know, if you always focus on being the first, whenever they're not the first, it really affects their self-worth. And, uh, uh, you know, it prevents them from doing uh, bigger challenges because they don't want to not be the best in whatever group they are. So instead we should actually you know, make our children, rather than being the best, do their best. And what that does is, you know, no matter what the outcome, whether they're first or uh, not first, they will always try to do their best. And when they have a challenge uh, with enough effort and hard work, they can, they know that they have the belief that they can overcome their challenges. And this is the reason why, you know, we should focus on building a growth mindset because it gives them a more of a problem solving uh, attitude in life. And to answer your question, Mr. Anis, this is why we need to raise morale in children in order for them to become self-confident, resilient young adults who are willing to take on the challenges that life throws at them. Thank you. Wonderful speech, Nadia. You really did throw some light on an important aspect of parenting, which is often swept under the carpet. These days, one of our hot topics is how the new generation has become too self-centered and selfish, that they do not have the kind of attitude towards the society that the previous generations used to have. Mrs. Lina Olasheri will give us her inputs on how to make our children socially responsible. Yes, Mr. Anis. Lina, could you please enlighten us as to how to make the children socially responsible in the digital or rather the connected world? Thank you, Mr. Anis. A very good day to all. First of all, I would like to make use of this platform on behalf of everyone. I really appreciate what the teaching faculty of Shatna Indian, Indian School has helped us parents in greater extent to boost the morale of the student in showing justice and equality during this pandemic, which has affected many, including me. The attitude you have as a parent is what your kids will learn from more than what you tell them. They don't remember what you try to teach them. They remember what you are. So we have to educate ourselves so we can set an example for them. I would like to categorize into two. Kids under preschool and primary. As now kids are more involved into gadget, especially during this pandemic, as we can see, even during online classes, teachers encourage our children to take some time off the screen. So we should also encourage our kids some time off the gadget. I believe we have to be a role model, as I said in the beginning, that our children imitate us as they are connected with us 24 seven. Let's say by learning to put the phone down. I know it is practically hard, but to teach our children to do so, first step is to create an in-home signal. My spouse and I can use when one of us is spending too much time on the technology, a nice way to say, you're being a screen monster. A signal might be something silly, but it might work. Another step is when your kid asks to play a game, ask to play together. The second category is kids above, pre above primary. Social responsibility is the idea that our actions affect others and that we should strive to impact individuals and society positively. 
In today's increasingly connected world, this sentiment rings truer than ever before. One post on social media can go viral, reach millions and make a difference in the world. A difference that can be positive or negative. For educators and us parents, it's crucial to teach kids the social responsibility that comes with being a global digital citizen. Children ought to be socially conscious. They need to learn compassion and empathy. Some ideas for us to foster social awareness in our kids and turn them into a better citizen in this digital world, start by introducing the concept of digital footprint. Explain that what you do on the internet and social media today remains forever. It can be searched by colleges, employers, family members, and even your future children. For this reason, it's important to create a positive digital footprint. You can have older kids Google themselves and evaluate their digital footprint thus far. You can also discuss non-examples, what makes a negative digital footprint, what behaviors should be avoided online. The best way to make it is through virtual practice. Think before you post. Teach kids to think before they post. T stands for, is it true? H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? K, is it kind? If any of these questions can be answered with a big no, then they shouldn't make the post in the question. When teaching kids to think before posting, it's important to also discuss cyberbullying. Talk about the negative consequences of cyberbullying. Explain that although it feels impersonal to hide behind the internet, the bullying is re very real for the victim, sometimes with tragic consequences. As of now, cyberbullying is nicely tackled by the teachers that incorporates citizenship lessons in this, into the school today. For example, a school is using online tool on which all students must collaborate where they teach how to use internet respectfully and productively. I hope you all agree with me too. In our connected world, each individual has a greater reach than previously imagined. So social responsibility has become increasingly important. Teach children to be responsible and thinking before you post. By teaching kids social responsibility at your young age, you're helping them not only create, have a brighter and more hopeful future. These are few suggestions from my side. You all might have a better suggestions. Please do drop in and feel free to discuss through chat box. Thank you, Mr. Anis. Not many parents are digitally literate. I'm sure most are confused as to how to guide the children through the digital world. Thank you so much for enlightening us, Lena. As parents, without doubt, our major focus will be the academic excellence of our children. We feel that in today's world, with increasing competition, any, any amount of academic excellence is not enough. We have with us Mrs. Shini Mohandas to share her experience and give us inputs on the various aspects to improve our children's academic excellence. Shini, sometimes children can get confused in organizing their work. How can parents help them in better coordination? Thanks for the question, Mr. Anis, and good day, everyone. I feel that this question is the need of the hour, as imbibing effective planning skills from childhood will help children lead a happy and successful life. Being a parent, I am concerned as how children will handle multiple responsibilities and become productive in this competitive world. I believe all the parents will agree with me. With few lifestyle modifications, we can bring a positive change from their childhood. As we all know, sometimes children tend to find excuses to postpone their work blaming the situations. The pandemic conditions have made things even more worse. For parents, this is a tough task to create a school environment with limited resources. By now, everyone are adapted to live with it in a safe way. I would like to share a few tricks that I tried during remote sessions that probably everyone would have done at home. Getting up early in the mornings on school working days, which is quite difficult even for parents now. Ensure that they get eight hours of sleep. 
else they will relax themselves during the live classes make sure that they complete their homework on time and with a, with a organized plan kids will learn more about it and discuss with them the difficulties they face for the pending work and help them to resolve it encourage them to attend the remote classes on time in proper school uniform as per the scheduled timetable motivate them to prepare their own time chart giving importance to playing learning and extracurricular activities assume if a fifth grader has allotted 2 hours as a study time help her to monitor plan an effective plan as how to complete the task within the allotted time giving importance to all the subjects the study time can be increased or divided depending on the convenience of the child as we all know we have to be liberal and flexible with their timing as they are still tender children will feel the positivity in their life due to this proper planning when this organizing skill is inculcated from childhood they become more responsible and committed to their work as they grow older for every minute spent in an effective way there will be a better result earned being parents we have to patiently boost them at regular intervals to lead an organized life thank you and over to you ms renis i'm sure that academic uh, improvement in academic excellence is one area which most parents would be keen to listen and i'm sure that you did not disappoint them shini thank you so much all said and done in the end we want the children to be happy to ensure that they are happy we have to ensure the wellness of our children in various aspects mrs sarada bhandari will give her insight on how to ensure mm -hmm. the wellness and happiness of our children thank you anisha for nice questions actually wellness is very important for us to stay healthy but in this busy and competitive lives, we have no enough time for taking care of our children's wellness, which can lead to child obesity, impairment of physical and mental health, as well as they might get surrounded by bad influences. So dear parents, we need to take it seriously. Before starting with the wellness, we need to understand what is the meaning of health, because wellness and health are very closer to each other. So what is health? Health is, a, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, as well as absence of disease and injury. Whereas wellness is the act of practicing healthy habits on a daily basis to attain better physical and mental health outcomes towards healthy and fulfilling life. So to stay healthy, we all are trying to practice different kind of healthy behavior on our everyday life, right? So that practice is called wellness. And there are different dimensions of wellness. And I'll start with the physical dimension. Physical wellness refers to a variety of healthy behaviors, including adequate exercise, proper nutrition, adequate rest, and sleep. These are very important for us as well as for our children to stay fit and healthy. So dear parents, we need to encourage our children for different indoor and outdoor activities. During online classes also, our teachers are encouraging children for some little bit warm up, warm up and stretching exercise, seeing that even I get motivated and I really appreciate teachers for all their effort in this difficult time. Likewise, we need to encourage our children for healthy food habits, make them sleep on time. For growing children need at least nine to 10 hours sound sleep for their proper growth and development. Encourage to reduce screen time, otherwise it may lead mental health problem over the time. And also make sure all the childhood immunizations of your children are up to date. It helps to protect them from different kinds of communicable disease, for example, chickenpox, measles, polio, and etc. 
Developing such a healthy habits will not, will not only add years to their life, but also it will enhance the quality and enjoyment of those years. So moving to another important dimension, which is social dimension. Human beings are social animals. So it is very important to teach our children how to behave to other people, respect to elder and love young ones. How to make good relations with other. Children, especially living in foreign country, they are really hesitant to talk to their grandparents and their relatives back home. This is my personal experience and I'm sure it is happening to you as well. So whenever we make a call, we need to encourage them to talk to our um, grandparents and relatives so that they will understand the value of generation and relatives. These their moral values so that they can be kind and share to other people. We need to teach them also why we need to get involved in different kinds of some community activities and welfare program so that when they grow big, they can apply in their life which helps them to develop positive relationship as well as gain effective role in the society. The third dimension, we have intellectual dimension, which is very important for our children's career. Intellectual wellness is being able to be open to new ideas, to train young minds, read bedtime story with them, which helps to develop reading habits. As the children grow, they need time and freedom to play and explore. Each child is unique. So stimulate your child's interest and curiosity and also provide resources and material as required. Encourage your child to read and get updated about what is happening in the world, which helps to develop their knowledge in different aspects. SIS is providing value-based, affordable and sustainable quality education, fostering active learning to ensure holistic development of our children. It helps our children to be intellectual. Last but not the least, we have environmental wellness. Environmental wellness means practicing eco-friendly activities, which helps to develop the quality of atmosphere as well as reducing global warming. So we need to teach, we need to encourage our child to follow such kind of habits. For example, conserve water and electricity, minimize chemical uses, try to reduce, reuse and recycle plant the trees as much as you can. Children are taught in the school about all these dimension of wellness, and it is very important to practice in the house as well, which helps to develop our children's well-being. This is my thought about wellness, and I would be very happy if parents can share their ideas in the chat box. Over to you, Anisha, thank you. The world is now realizing the importance of keeping the mind, body, and spirit in synergy. Sarada did a good job throwing light on this important subject. Thank you so much, Sarada. Antoinette, how can we reframe the negative thoughts in children to positive? Thank you, Mr. Anis. I have a question to everybody over here. Last year, in the month of March, the whole lockdown started due to COVID-19. Education was a fear for everyone, what would happen? But Swanjan was one among the schools which still continued with the online classes, they implemented the online system, and we continued with the education. Along with the academics that we continued, they even had the creative fest, the offstage items. And during the summer vacation, our senior students had uh, hosted the talent fiesta for our children. How many of us had actually initiated or encouraged our children to take part in it? Can you just put in the chat box? Did you encourage your children to take part in these activities? I can see a lot of yes coming in. Well, that's really good. Because have you ever thought, have you actually discouraged your child in taking part in any kind of activities that you feel she may not be able to do so, or she might be shy to do, or she's not skilled enough? Has this kind of thoughts come into you? I'm sure definitely each, would, each one of us would have had that at one point of a time. But do you really think discouraging your child in taking part in not just, I'm not talking about activities, but in anything that they would like to do in their life, 
is not you should you should not be encouraging them to do it yes they could fail but so what if they fail encourage your child to occasionally step out of their comfort zone it's more like how miss nadia had said they need to expand out of their comfort zone they need to learn they need to understand what their capabilities are she or he might fail but that's the only way they can actually come up from that that's how they know how competent they are give your child credit and praise for her efforts not for the result because see winning or losing that's it depends on so many factors there's luck there is a lot of skills and things involved into it but participation doing something what they feel like doing that actually boosts up their morale as well as positivity in them another one is being realistic now when you say realistic have you actually tried now when we said about encouraging your children in doing a lot of stuff have you actually given them false hope you know that she or he might not be as good as maybe playing tennis but you kept boosting them saying that they are the best now that is another negative thing that we are doing being realistic with your child is very crucial because not only she uh, hears your false opinions but she may also face adjustment problems when she comes into realizing that she is having actually problems in that particular activity because she will always have her parents idea conflicting with the world helping your child confront the realities that impacts their goals and that actually even addresses their fears and make concrete plans and gain energy to take action last but not the least we can't be positive all the time there are scenarios where you come into negative thoughts and words and phrases on a simple example your child comes back home with a max test paper and he has he or she has not scored well now obviously as any parent would do you would be upset with it some parents do shout some parents may hate some parents may use harsh criticisms that's pretty much natural and i'm no i'm pretty sure all of us have done that but why don't we change that attitude and think of other ways to handle that situation for example sit with your child go through the paper ask him or, or her what went wrong did you not understand the concept was the way the teacher taught or how i taught was it difficult for you to understand there could have been so many reasons or did you not revise it before the exam today we know we have google classroom we have edubrisk we have the entire platform which is like a blueprint for us myself also being a working parent i might not be able to go through every single day of their academics but at least i make it a point that on a weekly basis i go through both of my children's academics i go through what they have done in the quiz their assignments everything because it's all there in google classroom you can actually review it you can even see how they are performing day to day and that's actually a plus point today why i mean i'm not only really just pointing out what went wrong why don't you even sit with them and see what went right for them which are the chapters or which are the topics they are good at so that way you can actually help them to understand the points which they are, they are lacking behind so these are very much uh, positive ways or that's how you reframe the negative talk into positivity now what's the importance of being positive it's very simple positivity makes it easier to achieve your goals in a positive framework of mind you can make better decisions every problem has a solution children can't differentiate between a negative and a positive thought but as parents we can help them out to differentiate it so positivity helps children to manage their responsibilities in a better way and always make them understand positivity is a choice you cannot enforce it if they decide and they cultivate to being positive and learning to be positive in their life that actually builds up their uh, so builds up their you know all their motivations and actually makes them a better person in their life thank you so much you've really thrown some light into how to deal with the negativity among the children in fact i feel that personally it was high time for me to hear a speech on this subject thank you so much antonet nadia i have a lot to ask what are some of the ways to raise the morale of the children could you also please enlighten us on how to correct the children without affecting their morale how can we make them humble without a negative impact on their morale how can we help the children overcome the fear of failure 
That was a lot of questions, but to be honest, I can only share my experiences. And, um, you know, one of the first things that I would suggest is, you know, make them try new things like Antoinette had mentioned earlier, you know, uh, uh, the school has had uh, the creative fest, um, uh, talent fiesta. So whenever these kind of things come up, you know, make your children participate with no expectations at winning, make them participate. And maybe, you know, um, they want to try out something they don't have a skill for, but you know, they, if they like it, you know, they know they have a new passion and they can work on it, put in more effort, be good at it. And um, if they, if they don't uh, win or they don't like it, so be it. It was an experience to learn from. And uh, another thing I would say is, you know, learn from failure. Failure is a great teacher. And let me share one of my experiences with failure. And it was a momentous failure. So I really remember the lessons taught by that failure. So when I was around uh, 12 years old, when I was in seventh standard, I uh, participated for a quiz competition. Usually it's my parents who prepare my speech for me. But this particular one, my, both my parents didn't have time. And I thought, you know, I, I'm experienced enough. I can listen to what others say and I can make up my own speech. But uh, on the day of the event, I was the first speaker to be called on stage. And uh, to my utter horror, I walked up to stage. I said all the greetings and the salutations. And then there was like silence for about five minutes. But it felt like eternity to me. And I wish uh, the earth opened up and swallowed me whole. But that didn't happen. And uh, uh, the MC asked me to go back. And that was the end of that. But uh, it taught me a great lesson. First of all, uh, don't depend on others. Depend on myself and be prepared. So what, uh, what I did after that was when I was in eighth standard, I signed up for public speaking classes. I got coached. And um, that gave me a sort of skill set. And then always... Another thing I learned is always have plan B because a lot of times your plan A can fail. So having plan B is a good thing. And um, the last thing I want to say is, you know, love your child unconditionally. Don't keep any conditions like, oh, you need to be the first at school or you need to be the best at math. Don't keep conditions like that for your love. You know, love them unconditionally because at the end of the day, that's what will give them true self-worth, you know, to know that they are loved in in spite of uh, doing bad at an exam or uh, failing in sport, no matter what, their parent is there for them. The parent has their back. And that is actually what will give them true self-worth and you know, failure and all these things humble them. And they learn to appreciate what uh, others go through. They're not going to be arrogant. At least let's not hope they don't become arrogant and um, love them unconditionally, no matter what. That would be my few suggestions to you know help raise morale. Thank you. Nadia, I'm sure that you really did help the parents to develop insight on how we can raise the morale of the children, which would dramatically turn around them in making positive contributions. Thank you so much, Nadia. Uh, Lena, how far do you think that the core values of Shantiniketan school has made our kids to be socially responsible? How can we bring up our children to be socially responsible? Thank you, Mr. Anis, for the question raised. I would like to know how many of you feel there is a need or change in the social values in our kids in today's world? Please drop your views on the chat box or raise your hands. Yes, I can see a few. Okay. I personally feel the core values of Shanti Niket in Indian school has fetched my daughter a big change. As I noticed since her pre-primary that all kids are fairly treated and equally no matter what their race is or disability is. The teachers have trained the kids to be honest and have strong moral principles. Let me share my two personal experiences with you all to confirm on what I have felt personally. My daughter, while playing out, she noticed where one of her playmates fell while playing. None of her other friends came forward to help her. Instead, they were making fun of her. But to my surprise, my daughter, she ran towards her and helped her. In another scenario, where me and my family, family went to meet one of our family friend's house, what I noticed is, 
kids are so engrossed in gadgets they really don't have the courtesy to even greet the elders can you just imagine whereas i am proud to say my daughter has these values touch wood this is the result of the core values which are so inbound in her a few minutes before we heard from miss antonet and miss nadia in the beginning how we can mold our responsible our kids to be responsible thank you miss antonet and miss nadia i sincerely hope we all can take back good suggestions made by other panelists by the end of this forum i would also like to add on what they have shared while we strive to give our kids the utmost comfort it is not a good move to get all their chores done by us parents or others not letting the kids perform their own task and not involving them in anything can make them highly careless about their work they would also start taking our efforts for granted often we are tempted to make decisions based on what will make us look better at the moment or what is the easiest in the short term i think most of you would agree due to this blended learning system we often end up doing most of our kids school work and school projects while we want our kids to excel in school i believe as a parent who does the work designed to help the student learn will cripple the child's learning and put them at a drawback in the future it's quite common to think that way yes but i really have to say our school has been thoughtful enough to introduce edu brisk which my daughter is looking forward to during the day we as parents should encourage our kids to do their own work and give them some additional task older we can increase the gravity of the task this will make them self reliant secondly we have to tell them about the issues concerning the world as most of us tend to underestimate our kids ability to comprehend news and thus don't involve them in such conversations if we tell them about national news kids can gain a better understanding of the world they live in this will help them have integrity one always make my child understand about the blessings she has as this will help her to lead empathy by pumping up positive attitudes i make sure in a daily manner she shows some small acts of gratitude i request you all to do the same personally i encourage her to be empathetic towards others who don't have the same facilities as she does this in turn will lead to better academics and career success which are being taught through various lessons by her teachers once she begin relate, relating to others this should enlighten her about the importance of being connected to the society by giving back to it we need to teach the value of helping others is priceless from charity to helping her classmates in studies co curricular activities etc as they become seasoned with such social activities they can take the lead eventually when they grow up we should understand that our kids look up to us and hence we need to check what we say and we do ourselves as i said earlier we should not forget that children would imitate us and as the kids mature these values would be so ingrained in their minds we should thus exercise the values that we intend to teach if we promise the kids anything we should sh show them their accountability by executing it seeing the evenness in our behavior our kids faith in the values being taught will get stronger just keep this in mind we all are born as empty vessels which can be shaped by moral values what makes a child gifted and talented may not always be good grades in the school but a different way of looking at the world and learning over to you mr anis may i know what's your take on this our children are our future if our children grow up socially responsible we have a bright future thank you so much lena for enlightening us welcome ah uh, shini Yes, sir. Could you please throw some light on how academic excellence can be achieved in an enjoyable manner, an enjoyable way? Thanks for the question, Mr. Anis. This is a great concern for parents and as well as students, as their academic excellence will reflect on their career prospects. How many of you agree with me? 
you can raise your hands yeah pretty much as they become organized sometimes they omit the difficult portions and this will be clearly evident when the examination date and portions are announced due to the lack of preparation they feel really low to face these examinations i will share my personal experience where i was able to rebuild the confidence in my daughter i discussed with her the difficulties she was facing in the subject asked her to make a list of the chapters prioritizing the tougher ones as she was reading encouraged her to read the chapter from the textbook twice and thrice and as she was reading it it created a curiosity within her to know more about the concept she noted down the concepts and when the concepts were understood with real life applications she was finding it interesting to complete the lesson when she evaluated herself by answering to the questions given at the end of the chapter it boosted her confidence i was so amazed to see the positive approach in her towards the difficult lesson as parents if we succeed in building this attitude in kids that will help them transform the challenges as opportunities to learn she then practiced with the worksheets model papers quizzes which boosted her confidence to face the tricky challenging questions for quick revision she made a brief note of the contents highlighting the events dates formulas equations etc as key points or sometimes as diagrammatic representation she practiced learning by writing believe me that did wonders it not only helped her in time management and better recalling but also improved the presentation skills and answering precisely to the questions when she found an improvement in the marks she aimed for a better score the next time the blueprint detailing about the weightage marks allotted for the question paper shared by the teachers helped her to prepare effectively and the rubrics grading system helped her to identify the errors she learned from the mistakes as the teachers corrected her encouraged them to take shorter breaks and warm ups during the preparation phase keep them relaxed without stressing them the day before exams as sarita had put an insight about wellness it's our responsibility to take care of the physical and emotional well-being of our children how many of you are aware of the new education policies that were announced in 2020 if you know share the details in the chat i'll give a brief insight about it the main objective is reorienting the education system focusing on vocational studies in school level children from grade 6 to 12 will learn one vocational subject like electrical works carpentry gardening pottery and etc a short period internship opportunities will also be given from vocational experts during their holidays imagine how wonderful it is no hard separation of streams between the arts humanities and science now children can choose their subjects across the streams due to time constraint i cannot go much detailing on it so give them the wider knowledge of career options understanding their talents and interest and support them to choose a career apart from the stereotype professions and kids of this generation are smarter and they clearly know what they need i think many of you will agree with me so motivate them to aspire their dreams and stand proud as successful parents thank you and over to you mr anish Shini, you did really yes. enlighten the parents on how to achieve academic excellence in an enjoyable way. I think parents will have better suggestions uh, than me, uh, Mr. Anish. They should. They should. Uh, you know, uh, put some uh, comments, some questions, something in the in the in the in the chat box so that you know it becomes more interactive. 
apart from some yeah, appreciation and the suggestions the will also help others exactly 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 you know anyway we are spending so, so much of time on this parent discussion forum so to make it more meaningful i think i think the uh, other parents apart from the panelists should actually contribute something to the discussion uh sarita could you please tell us what parents can do to make their children happy and be able to lead a happy life thank you sir can you all raise your hands if you are happy today wow i can see many hands are raising that's great happiness is very important to live a healthy life and especially for growing children happiness plays major role in developing their minds so what is happiness the definition of happiness is very simple this is the state of being happy so to make our children happy we parents should be happy first because happiness gives us positive energy in the house but how can we be happy happiness depends on our thoughts some people get happiness from material possession money nice job big house but that happiness does not last because the desire of human beings comes one after another and there are some other people who get happiness from their own mind and this happiness will be last long actually all the happiness is within you so don't bother about the external external circumstances as well as other people because we can't control other every single day i would like to give you an example the factory of sugar is within you but you are searching for a bowl of sugar here and there i repeat the example the factory of sugar is within you but you are searching for a bowl of sugar here and there it means all the happiness is within you but you need to recognize yourself who you are and i have another example if somebody say good about you you feel happy right and if somebody say bad about you bad about you you feel unhappy it means your mind is controlled by other do you like your mind being controlled by other of course no if so we need to do three things the first thing is we need to stop outsourcing our happiness and second we need to stop outsourcing of our own happiness and the third we need to stop blaming for our own happiness we are human being of course we get angry and sad but just pause it and think about it and rebound yourself so the angerness will not be last so dear parents we need to be apply we need to apply these things in our everyday life as i said you earlier to make our child happy we need to appreciate our children for their different for their effort no matter how small it is show your love and affection teach them to build up good relationship with others try to understand their feelings take them for short trip in different places during their holidays buy some surprise gift in different occasion give them some responsibilities so that they feel they are valuable for the family and also they get happiness from the school for example asias teachers appreciate and motivate our children quality among all the students and with the teacher with the friends extra curricular activities harmony relation with teachers and friends and these are my thoughts about children's happiness and i'm sure parents have a better thought dear parents can you share in the chat box stay happy stay safe and be positive thank you over to you anisha happy children means a happy future sarada did give us wonderful insight on the subject thank you so much sarada many among us have a feeling that scoring high marks 
is the most important criteria in a student's life. Nothing is further from truth than this belief. To ensure that our children are really successful and happy in life, we need to ensure that they develop a positive attitude to life and be socially responsible. Today's children are our future. Until and unless they develop a positive attitude to life, they will end up stressed and will not be able to live life to the fullest. If our kids do not grow up socially responsible, our society will not have a future. All the panelists emphasized on one common thing, that we parents should be role models for our children. There is something which is of supreme importance. Sometimes teachers can also become role models for the uh, children. But are teachers and parents only serve as role models? I have a personal uh, experience to share. When I was a child, my father was uh, in the Gulf. So I, did, I, I had his presence only once uh, in a year or sometimes one and, once in one and a half years and all that. I was a voracious reader during those times. And, and my favorite uh, subject Hello. Uh, my favorite subject uh, uh, was biographies and autobi autobiographies of great people. In fact, you know, I was so inspired by the stories that I got from the, those biographies and autobiographies that, you know, they became my role models like Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, etc., etc., etc. And this helped when, whenever my, you know, my life took nose down or I had very tough times, these people, these great people who became my role models helped me to serve, to survive. The insights the panelists shared on the school's objectives help in a more effective participation of parents in the development of school as well as the wellness of children who are the end product. At the end, I would like to express my special thanks to school for bringing up such a relevant topic for discussion. In particular, I would like to thank Mr. Matthew and Mr. Shakir for their extended guidance, for their extended guidance to all of us in making this discussion possible. Oh, 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 over to over over to Jumana for the concluding part. Thank you very much, Mr. Anis. Well, that was indeed a great discussion with many suggestions cropping up in our brains. Am I right? Since time is a constraint, we are bound to abide by it. And I'm happy that we were able to do the best. As all our panelists say, I would like to take this auspicious occasion to thank the wonderful intern helped our children a lot to override the situation of pandemic. Now, let me take the privilege of inviting the beloved principal of SIS, Dr. Subhash Binaya, to review and give his remarks. Sir, please. Thank you, Mrs. Jumana. Mr. Anish, Mrs. Antoinette, Mrs. Nadia, Mrs. Lina, Shini, uh, Mrs. Sarita, thank you for a wonderful discussion. You have discussed not one topic, but so many very relevant topics. And the discussion was very meaningful <clears throat> and interesting to listen. Uh, as you have rightly said, a school mission is to provide quality education with the meaningful, with the help of meaningful participation of parents. 
to ensure holistic development of our children. So here, my comments may be a little radical. You may or may not agree. But I would like to tell you that learning has got a lot of emotional aspects attached to it. It's not just a mechanical process or a mere cognitive process. We at SIS, we have identified certain emotional building blocks to make learning effective. And we have been discussing this in many meetings where teachers discussion or students discussion happened. <clears throat> and these building blocks, as you will agree, are affection, acceptance, attention, attributes, attainment, accolades. So it goes like this, but the most important emotional aspects are affection, acceptance, and attention. See, affection is building a relationship with the child. So you may say that being parents, we are naturally affectionate, but it has to be carefully sustained. And acceptance is a very important factor that we need to accept children as they are without expectations, without comparison with other children. We need to accept them as they are. And the, by attention, what we mean is children developing the ability to be attentive through our attention on them children feeling the need for learning. That's attention. So once these three emotional aspects are in place in a balanced way, learning will definitely become effective. That's what we believe. Now, we always talk about joyful learning, but our children should understand and we should help them in understanding that joyful learning doesn't mean always having fun. For them, joy is equal to partying or games. We need to educate them how to derive happiness, the real joy by attaining knowledge, skills, and values. That's the very purpose of school education. That's what we are collectively doing. So the parents' participation is largely needed to balance all these different dimensions. Now we want our children to develop confidence. Confidence always comes from knowledge, skills, and values. So if we help our children to gain knowledge, to develop skills and to attain values, to imbibe values, then confidence will naturally come. Uh, I, I, I'm very happy that you talked about <clears throat> failure, how to deal with it. But I would like to tell you, there is no failure in school education. Absolutely no failure in school education. If a child comes to school, and that day for the child is a successful day because unimaginable amount of interactions, socialization, experiences the child gets, which we may not be able to see, but the child will actually experience. That, that's what we call it attribute of learning. And there is no distinction between scholastic, co-scholastic, extracurricular learning or education. Education is one, an integrated one. 
And the new education policy stresses on that. So the child should be able to enjoy what he or she does at school, at home, in the name of learning. So that education, that integrated education is what we're looking for. And that's why we are now giving more attention to art integration, value integration, uh, health integration, mindfulness, happiness, all those things. Now the stress, we were talking about stress. One of the panelists, I remember, was talking about stress. The stress of parents and teachers is what is reflected by the child during the exam time. Child in its normal way of growth and development, there is no stress for learning because learning is a natural process. But expectations, unrealistic targets, unwanted pressure, all these things are due to the parents and teachers' unhealthy intervention. If parents and teachers are happy, then their children will also be happy. Believe me, that's the fact. Children must face difficulties. You should not overprotect children. And this is for developing resilience. If you protect them all the time, if they're not facing any difficulties, how will they develop resilience to emerge out of successful from the so-called failures? They would not have learned to walk without falling. You should definitely remember this. Allow children to face difficulties and then become strong. Now, see, I, I would like to sum up the essence of what you discussed as the objectives of our school. We want excellence in active teaching and learning. So teaching and learning is one process or two sides of the process. We want excellence there. Excellence comes when we are able to help everyone, each and every one of our children to do better and to enjoy and celebrate their learning. The next one is parents and community engagement. Positive, you were talking about the positivity. All our parents thinking good about our school and what's happening in our school, what we are doing for our children. If our parents are able to think positively, that itself will boost success of our children. There is that kind of an energy relation which I'll not be able to make you understand. So what more we can do is obvious. Just thinking positively about the school gives such a success, then what we cannot do is so much. Now look at today's discussion. Such a wonderful discussion, such a beautiful sharing of thoughts. So this is just an example. Another objective of our school is wellness and happiness. You were talking about happiness. So we want everyone in the SIS family, parents, teachers, other staff members, students to, to feel happy, to be happy, to learn to be happy. Values and ethics. The school education becomes meaningful only if our children are able to imbibe all those values we talk about. And in that process, when we have these objectives met naturally, the other objectives will be attained. Those objectives are student success, staff success, 
and institutional excellence. So this is what we want the school to attain. That is what we call distinctively excellent education. We should be in a position to mutually help and support each and every one of our children to be successful and to celebrate their knowledge, their learning. Thank you very much once again. I thank Mr. Matthew and also Mr. Sakir Hussain for uh, coordinating with all the parents and bringing them uh, to this common platform for discussion. And I thank all the other parents who spend their time uh, listening to this discussion and sharing their views. Uh, and for the school, the parents' involvement, meaningful involvement matters a lot. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you, sir, for your kind words of wisdom. I would like to personally thank the wise teams of parents who created a ripple in all our minds today. Mrs. Antoinette Ross. Once again, Mrs. Mrs. Antoinette Ross. Mrs. Nadia Nuruddin. Mrs. Lena Olasheri. Mrs. Sarita Bandari, Mrs. Shini Mohandas, and our moderator, Mr. Anis Kari. Before I take leave of you, I would like to convey my heartfelt thanks to the president of Shantaniketan Indian School, Mr. K.C. Abdul Latif, Principal Dr. Subhash B. Nair, Shantaniketan Indian School Management Committee members, administrator, vice principals, head teachers, teachers, educators, academicians, and my dear fellow parents. With that, I close the SIS Parents Discussion Forum 2021. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great day.